Hi, my name is Jared Bramvig, and today I'm going to be showing you how to make this adorable placemat. Um, the fabrics are from my second fabric collection for Le Chien. It's the Connor collection. And um, I'm going to show you how to take this cute quilt block from my, um, you can find the pattern for this quilt block from my second book, Quiltisty Go Made Vintage. And I'm going to show you how to turn it into this placemat, um, which uses lace embellishment and has this cute little pocket on the side for your utensils. All right, so here's what you need to make this placemat. First, you're going to need to assemble this star block. Um, and you can find the pattern from my second book, Quilt As You Go Made Vintage. Um, it is block number 45. You will also need a strip of lace that is about 13 inches. Um, you will need two rectangles. Um, these will become the sides of your placemats. Um, and they need to measure 12 and a half by four and a half. And then you will also need another rectangle. This will become the pocket. Um, and this measures 10 by four and a half. And what you're going to do is you're going to fold it in half, press it, and then uh, sew, um, sew right along the seam right there. And that will become your pocket. And then the back of your placemat, which measures 20 and a half, 20 and a half by 12 and a half. And then um, you'll also need a good pair of scissors and I like to use this soft and stable batting. It's a really neat batting that's foam um, and it's washable and it has a very nice professional finish to your project. All right, so before we get sewing, what we're going to want to do is take our lace and cut it um, in half lengthwise. And again, this is where those eyes come in handy. What we're going to do is just cut right down the center. Um, and use those eyes as a guide. And I'm just going, you can use your rotary cutter if you want, but um, I'm just gonna go ahead and use my scissors. So I'm just cutting right down the center of those eyes. And this will cut the lace in half lengthwise right down the center. There's so many fun ways to use this lace. Okay, so now we have two pieces. And what you're going to want to do is attach these to your star. So align one strip of lace with the scallops facing towards the center of your star. You're going to want to align this with the edge, with the raw edge of your block. And then you're going to want to sew um, approximately a 1 8 inch seam allowance here just to make sure that it stays in place. Um, just as You just want to make sure the stitch is less than, one -fourth, than a 1 4 inch seam allowance. And then you'll, you're going to go over here and do the same. So the scallops are facing towards the center of the star and then you're going to sew approximately 1 8 inch seam allowance to make sure it stays in place. And then you're going to want to take your pocket and place it over one side of your rectangle here. Um, and similarly, you're going to want to sew a 1 8 inch seam allowance here and here. You don't need to worry about the bottom, just on the sides to make sure it stays in place. And then once you've done that, then you're going to um, sew the sides of your placemat. You're going to sew these two rectangles to your star um, uh, with the right sides facing together. You'll sew your 1 4 inch seam allowance, press it, um, and do the same here as well. And then you will trim off any excess um, lace sticking outside of your star block. So here's how it looks like when everything's sewn together. So as you can see here, I sewed both of my sides onto my star. And then when I pressed it, I just um, made sure to press the lace away from the center of the star. And then the next thing you do is you lay the top on top of your the soft and stable batting. And then um, I like to just iron it to help keep it in place. You can place a few pins um, and then quilt it. Um, you can quilt it however you like. I just went ahead and did some simple straight line stitching along the seams. Um, and then the next step is to trim any excess batting sticking outside of your placemat. So let's go ahead and do that right now. You just align the ruler along the edge of your placemat. And the last step is to add the backing. 
Okay, so the last step here is to add your backing. And so what you're going to do is you're going to take the 20 and a half, 20 and a half by 12 and a half rectangle that you previously cut, and you are going to place it right on top of your placemat. Oh, so right sides facing together. <clears throat> here I would recommend using a walking foot. And what you're going to do is you're going to sew a 1 4th inch seam allowance going all the way around the perimeter here. Um, but you want to make sure to leave at least a 6 inch opening. So what I would do is start right about here, away from the corners, um, back stitch, and then sew your 1 4th inch seam allowance going all the way around. Like that. And then end it with a back stitch here and make sure you have that opening. And then you want to just trim off any bulk on the corners. And then what you're going to do is turn it right side out so that um, you see the pretty part of your placemat. Um, once you turn it right side out, you're going to use um, stitch witchery, which is this fusible bonding web, to close that opening that you use to turn your placemat right side out. And it's really easy. It's just kind of like um, kind of like a little glue that you just stick in there. Um, and it becomes a glue when you heat it up with the iron. So you're just going to fold that opening back inwards one fourth inch to match the rest of the seam um, to close it up nicely. And so it'll look like this when it's done. Um, and then press it, make it nice and flat with the iron. Um, and then you're just going to do a top stitch going all the, all the way around. This is just using a one fourth inch seam allowance to give it a nice finish. And that's it. So here we have the finished placemat. Um, that's how the front and there's the back. And it's great because you don't really have to do binding because of the way that we finished it. We just did that top stitch, which gives it a really nice professional look. Um, and if you want, you can take it a step further and do a table runner, which is what I've done here. Um, and to do the table runner, it's basically just three of these star blocks. Again, that's block number 45 from my second book, Quilted Deco Made Vintage. And then I added um, sashing, which is three and a half by 12 and a half. I did um, one in between each block as well as one on the end, so you need a total of four. You finish the table runner the same way that I showed you how to finish the placemat. And then at the end, if you want, um, you can do, you can finish it with the lace binding embellishment. It's a really fun project with lots of possibilities.